Hello, my friend. If you are a Christian husband, cutting up, cheating on your wife, disrespecting her, calling her out of her name, physically and emotionally abusing her, know this. God does not want to hear anything that you have to say. God is not going to listen to you or answers your prayer at all. You will not be blessed, nor will you have success long term in your life. This is not some kind of a curse that I'm putting on you. This is biblical. This is the word of God. There is a scripture in the Bible that talks about how a husband is supposed to treat his wife. And if he treats her differently, there's going to be consequences. In this video, I will share with you that scripture. And then I will break down the scripture to you and give you some ways in which you can improve your relationship so that your prayers will not be hindered when you pray as a husband. Let's have this conversation. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I am Doran, and this is Not Easy to Broken. On this channel, we help Christian couple faced in marital challenges transform their lives and marriage through personal and spiritual growth aligned with the Word of God. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7, let me pull this up on my iPad real quick. It tells us that, likewise, ye husband, this is a King James Version, dwell with them, that is your wife, according to knowledge, giving honor unto your wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being here together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Now, I like the Amplify version, and here's what it says. In the same way, you husband, live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, and with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship, as with someone physically weaker, since she is a woman. Show her honor and respect as fellow here of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. I like that part, hindered or ineffective. In a Christian marriage, this verse is interpreted as guidance for husbands on how they should relate to their wives. And I'm going to break down some key points in this particular verse. Number one consideration, husbands are urged to be considerate and thoughtful in their interactions with their wives. This means taking into account their feelings, their needs, and their concerns. You know, talk to your wife, listen to her, lean into her, and also meet her at her needs. This means that a husband should be emotionally available to his wife. Show interest in her. Treat her like the queen that she deserves to be treated as because she is your queen indeed, right? So number two, um, respect. Respect. The verse emphasizes the importance of treating your wife with respect. It is not only the wife who should respect her husband, right? Wives need to respect her husband, yes, but the wives need respect too. However, this respect is demonstrated based on how you as a husband love and treat your wife. This includes valuing her opinion, showing honor to her, and not demeaning or, or belittling her in any form or way or fashion. It is about elevating her. It is about loving her and treating her with the honor that she deserves. It, it's showing interest and, and going the extra mile to make her feel special. That's what this is really talking about. And my friend, if this video is blessing you and adding some value to your life, please do us a favor and hit that like button. It is the best way that you can show your support to this channel. And also subscribe to this channel if you want to get more content like this. Number three, acknowledging differences. Yes, acknowledging the difference between you as a husband and your wife. Now, the phrase as a weaker vessel or as a weaker partner is often misunderstood. It does not imply inferior to you. It means that your wife is not lesser than you. She's not subservient to you. She's equal to you. You are both created equal by God. And a matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and 28, it says, so God created man in his own image and in the image of God created him, male and female, he created them. I'm reading from the, the King James Version. And in verse 28, it says, then God blessed them. It didn't say God blessed him. 
It didn't say that God blessed Adam. It says that God blessed them and God said to them. So God was not just speaking to the man. God was also speaking to the woman, right? God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Did you get that? So when you are treating your wife lesser than you, you're out of order. You're out of the will of God. You don't mistreat your wife. She's not lesser than you. She's equal. You are both in a marriage together. And in a kingdom marriage, in a godly marriage, the man and the woman, their roles might be different. Your role, as it relates to God's divine purpose and plan for mankind, might be different. But you are equal. You have equal responsibility to occupy the earth, to govern the earth, to take dominion over it. Now we know what happened when sin came into the picture, that it changed everything. Now the man wants to rule over the woman and the woman wants to rule over the man. But it's not how God intended it to be. It is because of our sin nature when sin came into the picture that it changed everything. So you're not lesser than your husband. You're equal. That's how God intended it to be. Working together. And can I say this, that one of the reasons why marriages are falling apart, it is because how can somebody look at another person that they profess to love as a lesser person? Does that make sense to you? That you say you love your wife and you look at her as a, as a lesser person? This scripture is really emphasizing that the man and the woman have different strengths and weaknesses. Yes, when Peter said that women may be weaker than the man, he was not implying any moral or intellectual inferior, but was recognizing women physical limitation. And let's not be ignorant. A man was born or designed by God with testosterone. He has muscles. He's built physically to be a protector. He's built physically to provide. He's built physically to show himself strong for his wife when he needs to show himself strong. And when he needs to show himself loving and caring and passionate, God created both sides of that man. Women in Peter's days, if unprotected by men, were vulnerable to attack, abuse, and financial disaster. Women's lives may be easier today, but women are still vulnerable. Yes, and they need protection. They're still vulnerable. Their family needs protection. We as husbands may play our role in the family so that their wives and our children are not abused by people, but we as men are there to protect and to cover them. Husbands are encouraged to be understanding and supportive in light of these differences. But it doesn't mean that you are lesser than your husband. Number four, joint heirs. That's what the word of God says, that you're joint heirs. This I light that husbands and wives are joint heirs of the gracious gift of life which can be seen as a reminder of their equal understanding before God. Equal. Yes, equal. I said it again, equal understanding. Now, my friends, in a Christian marriage, both partners are seen as equal in values and in worth. The wife is equal. Again, as I said earlier, she's not lesser than you. She's equal. She's not subservient. She's equal. She is right beside you. She is your helpmate. She is working with you, creating and building with you. The two of you guys coming together as one create something beautiful. And when a husband honor his wife and respect her in this manner, you are blessed by God. The Bible says, you know, he who findeth a wife findeth a good thing and have obtained favor from the Lord. You are blessed and honored by God when you find a wife. Point number five, prayer. This is the key point in this whole entire video. The Bible says that your prayers will be hindered. If you are a married Christian man and you're not honoring your responsibility, there, this is a problem now. Because the verse suggests that treating your wife with consideration and respect is linked to the effectiveness of your prayers. 
It is linked to how God view what comes out of your mouth. It implies that a husband's relationship with his wife can impact his spiritual life and his relationship with God. God will not answer your prayer if you mistreat your wife. That's what the scripture is saying. As a husband, the way you treat your wife, it matters. If your wife is crying because of the things that you say about her, the words that you're using and you mistreat her, you're cutting up, you're shacking up, you're committing adultery, you're physically abusing her. I mean, if you're doing these things as a Christian, what kind of Christian are you? That's not godly behavior. That doesn't exemplify or it doesn't represent a godly man. It doesn't represent a good Christian husband. And how do you expect to hear from God when you're doing these things, no, I'm telling you, God doesn't play games with men like that, man. You don't need no smoke with God, man. So do the right thing. God is not going to answer your prayers. This is a clear sign that your prayers will be hindered. I'm not calling down anything on you. You're doing it to yourself. And this is not a wife getting bypassed by disrespecting your husband. Oh, God have something for you too, because your prayers won't be answered. But I'm dealing with the scripture based on what it says about husband. And, and sometimes husband will say, you know what? I feel like you're picking on me. Well, it's not a matter of picking on you. It is a responsibility that comes with the assignment. It is a responsibility that comes with you being the head, the leader. Not a ruler, but a leader. This is about spiritual maturity right here. This is about knowing your role and your responsibility as a husband. This is where personal growth, you growing, elevating, and developing as a man of God comes into play. Very important that you get this in your mind and in your spirit that you as a husband must display Christ-like behavior. We're talking about a Christian husband now. Spiritual growth must be on full display so that you as a husband can be honored and be respected by your wife. I mean, you know, I said this before, and I think I'm going to do a video about it, that a real man does not have to demand respect from his wife. You command respect. You command respect by your behavior. You command respect by, by how you show up. You command respect by what you do. You command respect by how you respect and honor her. You command respect by the intimacy, the love, the affection, the, the respect, the maturity that you display in the marriage. That, my friend, is how you command respect. You don't demand it. If you have to demand it, it's automatically showing two things. You're not performing as a good husband or you marry someone that does not respect her assignment as a wife, a responsibility as a wife. And if she don't, then that's an issue, my friend. Well, my friends, that's it for this video. I hope this video was a blessing to you and thank you so much for watching. And if this video adds some value to you, then please do us a favor and hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. And here's another video that's gonna help you to become the kind of husband that your wife loves coming home to. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you in the next one.